Okay, so we're talking about the April 8, 2024 total solar eclipse. Hopefully I've sold you on the idea of getting into the path of totality to see all the amazing effects of totality. You gotta be again in that narrow band, the umbra of the moon's shadow, the deepest part of the moon's shadow in order to see all the things that we talk about with solar eclipses. The Obviously the corona, which is only visible when the photosphere of the sun is completely blocked by the moon's disc. And the, the streamers, all the effects of the corona, uh, the bright stars and planets, the deep twilight, 360 degree twilight, birds and insects, if you're around them, bedding down for the evening, cheering crowds, shadow bands, just all those amazing effects. So now getting into the path is one thing. Getting into the path where it's clear is something totally different. And that's one of the reasons why I'm calling this eclipse April 8, 2024, the heartbreaker, because we know the saying, April showers bring May flowers. So um, dodging the clouds is going to be anything but a trivial task for this particular eclipse. So I thought I'd take just a couple of minutes here to talk a little bit about weather and give you kind of an idea of what we're facing, quite frankly. So again, uh, this is the path of totality. You can see it here. It's about 124 mile wide zone that stretches from the west coast of Mexico through Texas, Arkansas, southern Missouri, just clips part of Oklahoma, and um, southern Illinois, crosses Indiana, Ohio, then the, the Great Lakes, Lake Erie and Ontario, up through New York, Montreal, Maine, and then out through Newfoundland. So, and you've probably seen this slide also. This was actually featured in a Sky and Telescope magazine issue from um, a year ago. And this is by Fred Espinak and Jay Anderson, Eclipsophile, basically showing you median cloud cover in the path of totality for the last 24 years or so. And if you just look at the cloud cover here, again, the color index. So the redder it is, the, the, the worse in terms of probability that it is for cloud cover. And then the more you get into the greens and then the blues, the better your chances. So based on this chart, to simplify it, the further south you go, the better your chances of lower cloud cover, and the further north you uh, the further north you go along the path, the 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 worse your chances get. And of course, the worse odds being up here in New England, Maine, and parts of New York also. And they also show this graph here. So, again, in terms of fraction of cloud cover, and then the the cities within the path. The lower the, the 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 graph is, the better the chances. So in terms of cloud cover probability, Durango, Torreon, some of these areas in Texas are probably your best, or in, in, in Mexico would be your best bet for having lower cloud cover, you know, about 20, 25%. And then uh, everywhere else, you know, the, the further north you go, the, the riskier it gets. Dallas, Little Rock, Poplar Bluff, Carbondale, all kind of around that. 55 to 60% range, and then it goes up from there as you get into the path. So now, and then of course they showed this also. This again was in the Sky and Telescope magazine issue from April, 2023, one year before the eclipse, basically showing you what the cloud cover looked like on April 8, 2022, which was two years before the eclipse, one year before this issue was, issue was released. This is NOAA satellite data. And it basically shows you that in the path, all the states were clouded out except for Texas, which is why the veteran eclipse chasers at that time were starting to target Texas for better weather odds. And here you can see the basically the same thing from the GOES satellite image for April 8, 2022. Again, most of the path clouded out, Texas being the exception, maybe some of the southwest parts of Arkansas. Now, having said that, here's what it looked like last year, April 8, 2023. So you can see here the path, and it was a much different forecast. Um, cloud cover, actually in this particular case, Arkansas probably would have been more favorable than parts of Texas, with the exception of the Northeast. So, and I actually snapped this image from VentureSky on the same day. We did a video one year to the day before totality, on April 8, 2023, right around the time that totality would have occurred. 
So you can see here that Arkansas would be it would have been, would have looked pretty good. Maybe parts of Missouri, and again uh, northeast Texas, but southern Texas not so much. So what I really want to show you here is just how much the forecast has varied in terms of cloud cover over the last several years for this particular day, April 8th. So here again, you can see April 8th, 2023, the blue line here showing the spots along the center line in the path of totality right around the time of that totality would have occurred. So again, we're on universal time, back out five hours for central daylight time. So if you were in Arkansas, right around 1.50 in the afternoon, central daylight time is when totality would occur. A little bit later, around two o'clock, if you're in parts of Missouri and Illinois, and then of course it goes up from there as you get into the northern part of the path. So this is what cloud cover looked like on this particular day. Now, as we're analyzing this, as we're looking at this, kind of think about what your plans would be on eclipse day if you were chasing the a clear spot, chasing the moon's shadow, so to speak. So again, I'm going on the assumption that you're gonna have you're gonna keep your, your plans flexible on eclipse day. Now I know a lot of people have made specific plans to be in a part of the path. And again, I wish you the best. If you if you have an Airbnb or a hotel reserved, or maybe you actually live in the path, or you have a relative that lives in the path and you've got a specific location in mind and you're planning to have an event, I hope it works out for you. I really do. Um, but one of the lessons that we've learned from these things is it's very unpredictable. And in this particular case, the weather is very risky in early April. So it's hit or miss. I, I wish everyone the best. And you'll see here that there were some days when we did have clear skies throughout most of the path. But there were also days where most of the path was clouded out. So this really is a crapshoot and quite frankly, very risky, which is why for me personally, I'm keeping my plans flexible until the last minute. And my plan is to drive wherever it's clear, make a long day out of it. If you're in the path already, if you're planning to be there, build in some flexibility because you will see just how, how much this forecast varies as we go through the years. Case in point, here's 2021. Again, most of the northern path clouded out. Arkansas, with the exception of the northern part, uh, was pretty clear. So Little Rock, Hot Springs, Texarkana, and then most of the areas in Texas, maybe a few high clouds here in some of the northeast parts of Texas. Now, we were kind of targeting Hardy, and one of our events was planned there. On this particular day, it may have been clouded out because you're in the northern part of Arkansas. So a little riskier if the eclipse had occurred on this day, three years to the day before April 8, 2021. Here's what it looked like on April 8, 2020. Again, you got some clouds here and you're kind of, you're, you're, you're playing a dangerous game, but most of the path in, in Texas, if you're closer to that center line and then up into Arkansas and even Missouri, it looks pretty good. Carbondale, you probably would have seen it. And then Indianapolis and even Ohio. So we get a day like this, I think our chances are good for most of the people, with the exception of, of course, the northern states, to see the eclipse. Now, you go back a year before, 2019, uh, not so much. So this would have been a pretty iffy forecast. This is, what we, this, this is really a nightmare scenario because if you're looking at cloud cover prediction a few days before, it all kind of looks the same, and no matter where you go, there's the likelihood that you're going to be dodging clouds. So this is kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario. Wherever you go, you're probably going to regret that choice. But you can see here, uh, it's pretty risky everywhere with the exception of, again, the southern part of Texas, maybe south of Waco in some of these areas here, which is why the veterans, the veteran eclipse chasers are, take, are targeting that area. But Arkansas, tar touch and go. Missouri, Illinois, and even parts of Northeast Texas, um, very spotty on this particular day. And then 2018, even worse yet. You can see here, most of the path clouded out. If we had this kind of a forecast and you really wanted to see that eclipse, your best chances, interestingly enough, are probably South Texas or Ohio. And I mean, this would be devastating if we were trying to 
reach it in a day. So we're we're hoping those of us who are based in Memphis and trying to make this in a day that we don't get a forecast like this, because if you wanted to snag the eclipse, realistically, you'd have to either fly south or fly north or drive north to get into Ohio. And that would be pretty brutal. So now there's a website you can go to and actually see eclipse uh, or cloud cover, not eclipse, cloud cover data going back 45 years. And I've snagged this video and pulled some of the images for presentations. I'll put a link to it in the uh, description for this video. But if we bring it up here, you know, we can go back all the way to April of 1979. So this is what the eclipse path would have looked like on April 8, 1979. If we're going back 45 years. And 1979, by the way, that was the last year that there was a total solar eclipse in the lower 48 prior to the one that we saw six years ago on August 21, 2017. So you see how rare these solar eclipses are. We had one in February, I think, of 1979, and that just clipped three or four states in the in the northwest, Oregon, Washington, parts of Montana. I think that was it. And then we had a 38-year gap between that eclipse and the one that we saw six years ago on August 21, 2017. And then we have a brief six and a half year hiatus before we get lucky again and see potentially this eclipse. And then we got to wait another 20 years. So we got a period of eclipse drought coming up. Very rare for them to touch the lower 48. Only four eclipses in what? 79, about, an, uh, about a 70 or 80 year span. So that's why we really want to see this one if we can. So anyway, April 8, 1979, if we had a forecast like this, most of the path clouded out. We go forward in time, um, 1980, not much better. Maybe a few spots in Indiana and Ohio. So if we had a forecast like this, Arkansas, probably Missouri, no go. Texas even looks pretty rough. So the northern states would actually be the winners here. Uh, 1981, again, very rough forecast. So we're going to see the first three years here, 79, 80, 81, pretty rough. Uh, 1982, very bad. Basically all of Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, gone, only Texas. So those in Texas would be the winners. Everybody else pretty much would have missed out. Now, this image, it looks like is a day later, April 9, 1983. So let's just skip over that one because I'm not sure we have data for 83. 1984, again, very rough day. Most of Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, all clouded out. Only Texas clear. So in that particular case, you'd have to do a lot of driving to get to South Texas to see it. 1985 looks a little better. Again, if you're in Memphis, if you're in Texas, not so much, but if you want to make a day trip from Memphis, Arkansas looks great, even Northeast Texas. Now, everything else, pretty rough. You know, Texas pretty much clouded out, and the parts of the path from Southern Missouri North are kind of touch and go. So, but again, you see how varied these forecasts are as we cycle through the years. 1986, a little bit better. You got some choices in Arkansas. Southern Missouri would have worked out. Illinois, Carbondale. And then Northeast Texas, not looking good, but South Texas looking pretty good. April 8, 1987. This actually looked like a really nice day for the most part. Again, South, you know, Arkansas, parts of Texas, maybe a little cloudy. But everywhere else, including Little Rock, Hearts, Hot Springs, Northern Arkansas, Missouri looks great. Illinois looks great. This would kind of be a dream forecast because then we would just head to Missouri along I-55, stop there, see it, and then turn around and come back. And of course, all the communities in these paths, including Carbondale, would have seen it and Indiana. So if you're in the northern states, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, you would dream for a day like this. 1988, even better. Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, pretty much clear. Texas, a little rougher. And 1989, another very frustrating forecast. So this, again, is a situation where probably not a lot of good choices, but when in doubt, you probably head straight down I-40, go to Little Rock, maybe west toward Conway, some of the areas there near the center, path, uh, center line, 
and hope for the best and probably would see it, including the people in in uh, Hot Springs and southern parts of Arkansas. Oklahoma looks like that little area there near the center line would would see it near Dequeen, Arkansas and Texar parts of Texarkana, but a very narrow window if the eclipse occurs in a, in a forecast like this. And again, you see what it looks like in 1990, a little bit better in Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. 91, very bad. You can see here when we go from one year to the next, how different it can be. We can get a great year, and then we get a year like this where most of the path is clouded out. Again, Texas being the exception, kind of like we saw in, in, in 2022 a couple of years ago. So in this particular case, the people in Texas would have seen it. Everyone else, with the exception of a few, it would be pretty rough. Uh, 92, these look like mostly high wispy clouds, but certainly not a perfect forecast, but you could do a lot worse. So probably pretty good odds here if we get a forecast like this of, 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 of seeing the eclipse. Uh, 93, again, very bad. Looks like Arkansas mostly clouded out. Same with uh, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. Texas kind of being the exception again. Looks like better weather odds down there. 94, excellent. Dream day. Pretty much everyone sees it. Ironically, the one spot that would be a little rough would be near the Texas-Mexico border, which is one of the spots that was highlighted in the article as being a better choice um, climate-wise for probability of seeing it. But ironically enough, on this day, that would have been one of the riskier spots and everywhere else probably better. Parts of northern Arkansas maybe be the exception. But this would be a great day if it worked out. 95, not as good, but some good choices here between Missouri, Arkansas, and Texas. So certainly if we're living in Memphis, we uh, we could live with this forecast if it happens. 96, not as good, but still some good choices here. Skip the northern part of Arkansas, basically go south and try to either hit southern Arkansas or north northeastern Texas. 97, very bad. Texas gone, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, maybe Illinois or parts of Indiana, some of these rural spots near the border, but everything else pretty much clouded out. So this would be a rough day. 98, um, Missouri. So here you either go to Missouri or you go to southwestern Arkansas, northeastern Texas, those areas. Those are your best chances. And of course, all of Texas is clear. 1999, again, Arkansas, very rough. Missouri, Illinois, probably not going to work. So you're trying to get into Texas. And again, if you're in Ohio, you would have seen it. When we come to the year 2000, and not a bad day here either. In fact, it looks like a gorgeous day. Most of Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, and Illinois would have seen it. Looks like when you get into Indiana, it gets a little rougher. So, but you get four states in the path that would have seen it if it had happened on April 8, 2000. 2001 looks like a lot of partially cloudy skies, some of these high wispy clouds. I'm not a meteorologist. They would be able to advise further, but um, you're kind of in and out of clouds on a day like today, partly cloudy. So, this again is another frustrating forecast because no matter where you go, you're probably dodging clouds, South Texas being the exception. 2002, very bad. Arkansas pretty much gone. Missouri, maybe a hole here. Um, Illinois, Indiana, pretty much all gone. Ohio, and of course, South Texas, again, being the exception. So... 2003, even worse. now. It's interesting here is you've got a sliver of, of of clarity here, clear skies in Arkansas. If you get east of the center line, maybe around Jonesboro or between Jonesboro and Hardy, or maybe around Little Rock, where you're not right on the center line, then you would see the eclipse. So we got a we got a 124 mile wide path to work with. So some 
a little bit wider path, a little bit more um, duration during totality to work with. So it gives us some flexibility to, to move here. So again, not, not the best forecast, certainly if you're north, but for, for those of us who are targeting Arkansas or, tar or Texas, this certainly would work. 2004, much better, a few wispy clouds here and there, but for the most part, you got five states, five or six states that would have the opportunity to see it. Again, South Texas being, being an exception. Uh, 2005, actually better. Now, here, if you're in Indiana, Illinois, or Ohio, it looks like that would have been a much better day, much more clarity. Uh, even Missouri not looking too bad, Arkansas, Texas is probably riskier than all those states on this particular day. 2006, looks like a nice day, most of the path clear. 2007, again, here, you know, further south you go, the better your weather odds. Statistically speaking, over time, that may be true. Here's a day that was the exception to that. Texas pretty much all clouded out, southwestern Arkansas. So your best bet here would be Northern Arkansas, a little window in Missouri, and then maybe parts of Illinois. But after that, you got a lot, a lot of the path is clouded out. 2008, again, very bad forecast. We just hope that we don't get something like this with the exception of maybe a boat in Lake Erie or parts of Northern New York, ironically, most of the path clouded out pretty rough. And then you get 2009, one year later, totally different forecast. Again, gorgeous skies. Looks like most of the path, if not all the path, completely clear. Indianapolis, maybe a little rough, parts of Indiana. Everywhere else, pretty clear. Maybe some spots in Texas you got a battle. But uh, this would be more or less a dream forecast. 2010, Arkansas, Texas looks good. Maybe parts of Missouri, everywhere else, pretty rough. Uh, 2011, again, you're dodging clouds through most of the path. You would probably have to pick a spot. Again, if you were going to North Arkansas near Hardy, you'd probably see it. And then everywhere else, with the exception of some of the areas in South Texas, um, it's a little risky. Arkansas gone, Texas gone. Again, here you go north, right? Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, those areas clear. Arkansas, Texas pretty much clouded out with the exception of some, some areas. Again, along the path in Texas would be clear. So we're looking at it a macro level, not necessarily a micro level. And here again, a lot of clouds in Texas, a little bit, a little more, a few more holes maybe in, in parts of uh, Arkansas but a lot of cloud cover in the path. So be a tough day here as well. Same thing here in 2014. Another forecast, we just simply hope that we don't get. Although if you're in Texas, you're gonna see it. Again, Texas being the one state that's the exception and then everywhere else along the path, parts of Ohio being the exception, pretty risky. Um, but then again, you get the opposite thing the following year in 2015. A lot of cloud cover in Texas, more clearing in Arkansas. In this particular case, the Boot Hill of Missouri would have been your spot. Following year, some nice choices. Missouri looks pretty good. Most of Arkansas, Texas, as you get into Texas, you know, again, South Texas, pretty rough. And then Indi you know, Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, not as good. 2017, I was actually in Little Rock this day when um, on April 8, seven years to the day before the eclipse. And it was a gorgeous day, clear blue skies. And we can just only hope for a day like this. Again, most of the path completely clear, maybe a few areas of Texas being the exception, but a lot of choices. So this was the day where I said, we need to order this for seven years from now on April 8, 2024 because it was a gorgeous day in 2017. And then we had this a year later, really rough day, mostly clouded out, uh, maybe a small hole here in Arkansas and then South Texas. So again, 
it would be pretty rough to try and make a day trip out of it if we had a forecast like this. 2019, we, sh we showed this earlier, um, a kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't forecast. No matter where you go, there's going to be some clouds except for South Texas, but there's going to be some patches in between where you can maybe dodge the clouds and, and catch totality. 2020, a little bit easier, more manageable. 2021, Texas, Arkansas, with the exception of the northern part, all the winters, everywhere else kind of clouded out. And this, of course, was in the Sky and Telescope magazine issue from a couple from last year. Basically everywhere clouded out except for Texas. That's why the veterans were, were setting up in Texas as better weather odds. And then we had this last year. So Arkansas clear and Northeastern Texas clear. And then Southern Texas and some of the other spots, actually South Texas, pretty rough. And then the cloud cover kind of just grazing the center line as you go up in, into the Northern states. But most of the areas were clear, including New York. So if we get a repeat of this, um, we'll live with it, except of course, if you're in South Texas. So that's what we're up against. You can see that the forecast is quite inconsistent and varies quite a bit from year to year on April 8th, going back 45 years ago. So we've had some days where it was perfectly clear, most of the path had seen it. We also had other days where it was almost entirely clouded out with a few holes here and there. And then we've had everything in between. So it's by no means an exact science. So again, set up, get your plans in place. And two weeks out, we start watching the weather. Then we get a 10 day forecast, a seven day forecast. And then we get a three day forecast, maybe the weekend before and make last minute plans to move. So this could be a day where there's a lot of mobility, a lot of people moving and maneuvering at the last minute to try and position themselves to see it. And it makes for some pretty challenging conditions. But we've had years in the past, like 2017, and we can only hope for a day like that again. So plan ahead, but also keep your plans flexible and give yourself options to maneuver if you need to, to get to a clear spot. That's kind of what we're looking at for April 8th. April, that kind of month. Let's hope for clear skies.